until now we have a very basic UI layer uh, what we have is just some components and some routing okay but now we need to have a service which will return data to our component like for example in the employees we need to show a table having all the employees their names and their cities okay so a service will be giving that data to our component and where will that service get the data from that service will get the data from web api that we wrote in c sharp okay so let us first create a service in our angular code what we can do is go back to our terminal and let us create a new service so ng for angular g for generate and s for service and this time service i have to create in a different folder let us call as service folder and inside that i want employees service so just like you do not give the name component after giving the name of the component uh, in service also you do not say employees service you just say employees it will automatically append the word service to it uh, you can also do a dry run like uh, dry dash run equal to true so it won't create that particular file it will just tell you what all it's gonna do and then if you like it then you say yes go ahead and do it and then it will uh, actually generate that service so dry run equal to true means uh, you know no changes were made so if you look at your solution uh, it has not created any folder inside app by name service and it has not created any service inside it okay so it was just a dry run it will just let you know that what kind of files will it create okay so it will just create one file and it won't modify any other file so now if you really want to do it then you just do this but without giving this flag now if you see that change has actually been committed so here one service folder has been formed and inside that uh, this service got created okay now let us examine what it has created in that particular service uh, it is just a class uh, having uh, injectable attribute and injectable means it can be injected into any other class okay now let us say that this uh, service has a method called get employees and this method returns an array of employees so these are the employees that I'm going to return every employee has a name and a city okay and uh, let me go to this component and inject that particular service over here since this service has injectable class it can be injected in any other class so every component is also a class by the way so here I can inject it and I can inject it like this I can say private employee service or any other variable name that you want to give and uh, it should be of the type employee service okay it got imported over here so this is called as controller based dependency injection okay so I have injected the dependency employee service into employee component class by the way of the controller so this is controller based dependency injection now I can use that particular um, uh, employee service in ng on init ng on init is the lifecycle hook there are various life cycle events in this particular component and uh, one of the most popular events is ng on init it gets called when you know uh, the component just initializes at that time I want the component to call employee services uh, get employees method and it should get this array of employees okay so I'm going to write here this dot employees service dot get employees okay now this get employees is just going to return an array okay and that array will be of type this kind of an object which is having name and city okay so let us hold it into some variable okay so variable employees equal to this now if I want to use this particular variable in the template I cannot write it as a variable I need to create a data member for it so I'll just create a data member I'll just write here 
public employees now even if you don't give any type by default its type is any but uh, if you are very specific then uh, you will actually give this type uh, that you know it should be an object a name city and then an array okay so i'll just say it will have it will be an array first of all of some object and that object will have name of type string and city of type string okay and it will be such an array right and this employees i'll be using there in the template so here i will just write employees and it should be piped with json so it will be uh, returned in the form of json okay now let us see that in action it is not returning anything let me f12 and see what has gone wrong i don't think anything has gone wrong uh, let me put a debug point over here and check it out so if you don't uh, find your uh, file over here you can always put uh, control p and you can search for your file like employees component.ts okay i'll put a breakpoint over here and i'll reload the page okay let me see now i can go inside the function by clicking on this particular button so i have gone over here and it is returning this particular array okay so i think that is fine see employees is having this particular array so employees has this particular thing oh yeah i have written variable employees i have not assigned it to this particular employees and that is a problem so i'll go back to my code i will just make it this dot employees okay now understand that it is getting reloaded see it got reloaded to this dot employees and now it should work fine yeah i'm seeing all those employees over here but what is the fun in seeing and json getting displayed over here uh, the fun would be if i could uh, draw a table over here with the uh, first column as name and the second column as city and then i would display every employee's name and city so we can do it using this particular template but before that uh, let me simplify this code a bit let me copy this part and let me put it in some html file which i create at this particular level okay i'll just create a new file and i will name it similar to that of the component so i'll be naming it like employees.template.html okay and here i will be putting that code now back to component here in the template i won't be giving template i'll be giving template url and i'll be giving the path to this particular file so i'll just be giving here dot that means in the same folder as that of this particular file that means this employees folder run a search for the file employees dot template dot html let's save it and let us see whether this works site can't be reached i don't understand why because um is it building i don't know it probably stopped so i'll rebuild it ng serve open and yes it does work and now let me go back over here in this template and let me write a table instead so i'll be writing a table having a tr having two ths so th multiplied by 2 enter so this is a shortcut of creating your html and uh, after this i also want one more tr having two tds okay uh, now in the heading i'll be giving name and city and here i should be seeing the name and the city of every employee so for every employee i need a repeater over here and the way to write a repeater in angular 2 plus is star ng4 and let employee of employees 
okay this employees is basically that array okay it is basically this particular array okay and it is going to have a name and a city so i'm going to write here that every employee this kind of an employee will have a name and a city dot name should be displayed here and dot city should be displayed over here okay let's see that in action yes i'm able to see name and again name what has gone wrong here yeah name and the city so this is fine now service is working fine at the moment but now the last piece in the puzzle is how to get this data from the database or rather how to get this data from this web api that we created okay so that is a tricky part here it is just hard coded now you first need to call this particular api and even after calling it it will give you a course exception so let me show it to you first that what kind of a course exception comes and then i'll tell you how to solve it so you first go to the service and uh, uh, you should import http client over here and then the module which is using it should import http client module okay so i'll do it step by step in the module you will find declaration imports providers bootstrap declarations are those components that you have written okay providers are those services that you have written bootstrap is again that part of the declaration which bootstraps your module so it this will be present in declarations as well as one of these declared components will be your bootstrap component okay but then what are imports imports are never components imports are always modules so this itself is a module and these are also modules so you are importing these modules into another module so that is why you use imports so here we need to import a module called as http client module and where will you get it from you will be getting it from angular common http so let me write here import http client module from at the rate angular common http okay and uh, i'm going to add it over here in the imports array okay done now this is the change that you did to app module now in the service you are going to inject HTTP client here module word won't be there. It's HTTP client. So you'll do it in this way import HTTP client it should be capital from angular common HTTP So both of them get imported from the same place HTTP client module also gets imported from angular common HTTP and HTTP client is also importing from angular common http okay and um, you will be injecting it as a dependency over here in the constructor so here you will be saying private http client of type http client okay so it got injected and the way to call it is like this instead of returning this array you will be writing this dot http client dot get and you will be giving this particular url okay you'll just be copying this and putting that url over here okay now it should work but it is returning you an observable see it is returning you an observable so you should also treat an observable differently in your component so here you won't be getting directly the array you will be getting what you will be getting an observable so you need to subscribe to that observable okay i'll just cut this part and i'll write here dot subscribe and inside this you will have to write some function but then inside that function i'll have to use this and that is why it's better to use a fat arrow function because it doesn't have its own this that means its own context so when i say this dot employees then it refers to this of the caller and that caller is this particular class so i'll directly get the reference to this employees and that is why i have to use a fat arrow function over here and here i'll be writing uh, whatever data i got from here 
okay so data what i got from the observable same i'll be putting in this dot employees okay now once again this data should be of this particular type so i will colon and that particular type okay so this is how it is so let us see that in action it is not working the reason it is not working is as i told you it will give you a cause exception now f12 to see what has gone wrong f12 will open your developer tools you can also open them like this more tools and developer tool or control shift i so here go to console and you will see that exception the exception that it is throwing is access to xml http request at this particular url from origin this has been blocked by course policy okay so what it means is access to this particular url which is this url this is the url of your web api that you created in c sharp okay so the access to that api from origin what is the origin from where did the uh, request originate it originated from a ui project that means this particular project the uh, visual studio code project or the angular project okay so angular project is basically requesting something from this uri okay and it has been blocked by course policy now what is course cross origin resource sharing that means let us say this website is microsoft and this website is google okay so can microsoft website access the data from google api it won't be unless google opens its api for everyone to access it okay and for that you know uh, google has to do this uh, that it has to go to its web config file and it has to add this particular header in the web config file so that every request coming will be accepted okay so i'll have to add this particular header to the requested resource what is the requested resource this is the requested resource and it has no this kind of a header is present in the requested resource okay so i'll have to add this particular thing so let me just copy this let me go to my web api and its web config file you will find it over here in the service project right at the bottom you will find web config file just open that you go to system dot web server okay so right at the beginning you will find configuration inside configuration you will find system dot web server there you start typing this thing http protocol inside that custom headers inside that add inside that you will have uh, two attributes one is name and another is value so write here name equal to something and value equal to something okay and here the first name should be the name that you just copied over here access control allow origin so this should be the header and here the value should be star now just copy this and here it should be instead of origin header and it should be content type and here it should be method that means the http verb uh, in uh, c sharp especially in mvc they usually call it as method they do not call it as uh, http verb okay so method and here which method are we using we are getting get okay now going forward in the future if you want to use any other uh, http method then you can give them comma separated so you can write here get put post delete etc okay and now if you save it it is going to say that you know you are already in the debug mode so do you want to stop the debugging now i'll say yes so that debugging will stop and now i will relaunch that application okay the application got launched let me uh, re-verify my api yeah the api is working fine now let me call it from my ui application that is localhost 4200 
and this time it is getting all this data right from this particular API and that in turn is getting it from the entity framework which is talking to my database so this is live data it is there in the database okay so this is the end of your project development now what you're gonna do is maybe you can refine that project okay and um, maybe add new features to it but this is end-to-end -end how your project is now the only thing that remains is how do you deploy this application because now you'll have to deploy two things one is your web api and another is your ui project and both of them should be deployed in such a way that they work in coordination with each other and ui project is able to use this web api so let us see that in the next video